Silas banned, Galio probably going to be banned. They're looking for that twist of fate pickup, right? And I think yep. when you're looking at Weibo, the Vladimir ban signals to me that they're probably looking to see if they can get this Kale again for the Shy and just kind of go for the, the uber late game in the top side. The only thing I will say, though, is like traditionally when you see like the Draven, you're playing for that mid game pressure. So I'm kind of surprised that we're not seeing them just kind of all in on that sure. um, with something like a little bit more early, but we'll have to see. Maybe I'm just misreading this because EDG actually banned the Twist of Fate themselves. So maybe they are just worried about Angel trying to play down towards the bot side and not actually take something like the, maybe they go for the Galio here or, or mm -hmm. they end up just taking something like the Swain for themselves. But you did raise valid points and you know, I, especially when we talk about the Draven pick. Dagda, I want to do a bit of history though, because remember that Juan Fong was on IG Young and once again trained behind Jackie Love. Kind of like we saw, you know, Wink as well in the same vein on Invictus Gaming. These Draven players coming through behind the man and legend himself. So uh, Wan Fong's going to show us what he can do, but you talked a little bit about setup and what can be brought to this lane. Now, while we don't get the Twisted Fate on the EDG side, I wonder what Angel brings up because the Ari's band, that was his speciality in the first series. And he's going to try the Orianna, which no one's really playing anymore. Yeah, I think it can still work well at getting control over the mid lane against Swain. Swain, like, really struggles against people that can have that full push. Okay. And there we go. It's going to be the Kale. I wasn't sure if, like, maybe we get a complete left turn and they go in towards a tank. Like, a Scion could actually be really cool here um, for Weibo. But instead, they are just going to stick back to the Kale. And the Shy, notably <laughs> as well, has been playing the AD version of the Kale. So we'll have to see if he's going to go for the same plan here. No matter what the build, like what the team's doing, right? They needed AP in their last game, but the Shy built AD anyways. So kind of fun to see, but he's going up against the Jace. And Flandre is as good as he is on this pick. So I was right to get excited about the top side, Dagda. But where do you want to start here? Because these drafts are kind of mesmerizing for game one. Yeah, I think for EDG, it's definitely going to be trying to play at range with the Jace and the Ezreal, right? Like, if you can try and keep Weibo at bay, just poke them down, you're going to be in a good spot. And okay. you're kind of trying to see if you can avoid a hook from On and the follow-up engage from Angel. And when you've got something like the Braum here, it's going to be kind of easy to try and help you play at that stage. And if Weibo ever do get in on top of them, that's where we'll see Scout kind of pop off with the Swain. But on the upside for Weibo... You just have great late game sc scaling coming through from the Kale, but the rest of the comp can do really, really well in team fights sure. if they're able to close that gap. And before I was saying as well, you know, just touching on the Orianna pick, I had Scout, has, who's been the only person to play this in the split so far. So second time being played, going up against the man who's only done it. Uh, I'm curious to see how Angel goes, Dagda, because again, we see a Draven down at the bottom lane. And we know that if Draven gets ahead early, Draven does Draven things. Uh, in the last game we saw, it was early adoration, but it was a pretty stable game. It wasn't really about mm -hmm. Wink. This time around, I'm wondering if Weibo Gaming actually played towards the bottom side and set up Juan Fong and On, who have been the shining lights, especially in, in some of those landing phases. Yeah, and I think that's the best way for them to try and play this, right? I think Angel should have full control over the mid lane, kind of set up a little bit easier for them to try and play down towards the spot side. But yeah. again, that's kind of been the big crux of the issues with Weibo, right? Is that we haven't really seen them go for a lot of these set plays. We're talking about at the start of the day. So I think this is going to be a big test to see how well Weibo can try and help Wanfeng set up on this bottom lane. Well, it may only be Monday, Dagda, but as we head into Summoner's Rift for the third time here tonight for our second series as the dragon jesus oh my god it's oh tft god. again oh holy dooly oh well okay we're back uh way gaming versus edg it might be a bit of an over overreaction but i am very close to my screen and that scared the the living hell out of me <laughs> i'm not gonna lie i just feel bad for the penguin <laughs> look you know animal cruelty to start things off on a Monday, that's just not my style. You know, I'm just putting it out there. But um, I'm also very confused by Juan Fong's choice of skins. It is, you know, it's June. Christmas. <laughs> but apparently it's Christmas <laughs> on the Rift, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, again, sorry for everyone's ears, ladies and gentlemen. That was, that was very full on. Um, <laughs> hey, Dagda, so look, away from the Christmas skins as well, I, I do agree in questioning it. Uh, we do have an interesting game where... EDG play defensive towards bottom side, but you talked about the range. Enlighten me a little bit here about how the laning phase looks uh, between for EDG, considering that last split we talked about them being such adamant and great laners. Yeah, I think on EDG side, right, like Viper Mako probably just going to take it relatively chill on the bot lane, right? Even though you do have this Draven here, 
if you ever go for the engage as on, you just end up with the unbreakable in front of you. You don't really get to trade particularly effectively, right? So you're going to be okay. Uh, it's going to be the top lane that I'm keeping my eyes on because I think if JJ can try and help support Flandre, especially these early levels to push in, try and put some pressure onto the shy, maybe even try and set up some um, uh, ganks up there as well. That's going to be where maybe EVG can try and open up this game. Okay. But I feel like Weibo, honestly... As long as they can get the push from Angel, then lean into bot side, they should be Ooh. relatively okay. Well, they've hit level two first, and that's a great dredge line to set it up. Exhaust used early by Mako, and at half HP heal stand. So a nice little setup using their advantage, Dagda, and already a good start here for Fun Fong and on. Yeah, and this is one kind of surprised CSFM, like starting on the bottom side. Because when I look at like the way the map is set up, right, if uh, Viper's PC could ever work properly. <laughs> but if, <laughs> if, um, uh, if he had actually started on the top side. Oh my uh, god. Uh, look, I'm not going to lie. So I did enjoy Arcane, but I got like very tired very quickly of the, hey, this is Jinx from Arcane. They have more Arcane to play champions well, on their team. I was like, yeah. Oh, you, you're lucky I'm still doing this for you. All right, question one <laughs> out of 18. Oh, my God, it started. Thank God. Okay, I don't have to do this. Honestly, I think you're, you're a bit of a vi with that attitude. As, ladies and gentlemen, we apologize for the delay. Uh, it was Mako's issue that caused the delay. As we're going to get action straight away. We've come back in at 3 minutes 20, and Flandre has absolutely no HP from the shy. And he wants to go for the 1v1, even with Jerje in range. Now... He's still melee, remember, and Flandre's going to have to respect that. But Dagda, we're so out of context. Where do you want to start? Yeah, I'm not really sure what's happened in this top lane. Like, Flandre, like, very, very low on the top side of the map, which I'm kind of surprised at. And I thought JJ would be able to get up there faster. But SFM managing to kind of intercept JJ on route, so they can't really uh, get much damage onto the shy. So at least now, you're kind of seeing, all right, uh, SFM is resetting going back. But, but JJ yep. actually looks like he might be... Thinking of a sneaky uh, lane gank. Yeah, moving in that direction, hey. Uh, Huan Fong and On waiting for the wave two, being very patient. Now, up in that top side, as we saw the trading come across, remember that Flandre burnt the TP to get back into the lane. The Shy has the wave crashing against him, but a teleport still at the ready. So, he'll be able to go back with Flandre quickly pushing this in. It's a cannon wave, but the Shy shouldn't be too long. Dagda, uh, remember before, as the Shy's back is cancelled, we were talking a lot about how EDG could potentially disrupt this top lane and get up there. Right now, Jeje's all the way on the other side of the map, and there's some really good defensive warding from Weibo Gaming to make sure the Shy just gets through the landing phase. Yeah, and I actually was kind of surprised to to see how well Weibo were kind of able to subdue that uh, from EDG. I think now, especially with the ward kind of spotting out where JJ is, this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. Even Angel, as we talked about, having push in mid. Looks like SOFM wants to see if he can get into the face of JJ, but it's going to just kind of let himself get spotted, which I'm surprised at. I think he could have, like, hit himself off for a while and see if he could match JJ across the map. Um, the Shy just getting auto-attacked to death by Flandre in the meanwhile. Camera can't help but pan up because the man almost dies. But this time, finally, it looks like he'll be able to teleport back. SOFM invading, though, Dagger, and you're right. He was spotted out, so... As the smite comes through, as the Shy decides not to back at the end, uh, it looks like Weibo Gaming will remain controlled up in this top side. And because of SOFM, the Shy feels, I guess, a little bit safer. I'm not going to lie. I wish that I could trust someone the way the Shy trusts this durability patch. Because the fact that he's willing to just blind pick Kale all the time and yeah. is sitting under terror on that health, I don't have that trust in anything. But apparently the Shy is totally all right. We'd just be like, yeah, I'm fine. He picks up his boots, uh, manages to TP back into lane as well. And Flandre is going to trudge his way back up. And I mean, it means that the Shy, honestly, kind of bypassing a lot of this strong early game from Flandre. Cause, but he's now got armor and he's also about to hit the level six. So he gets the range into his kit as well. I mean, dude, he's, he's really not that far down in CS. What was it? Four, three, five, maybe. So against the J, so far, so good. The Shy will be ranged in next level as well. And I'm so glad you pointed out the, you know, the Ninja Tarby, right? The, what are they called? Plated Steel Caps now, um, living in the past. But, you know, against the Serrated Dirk here, doing something as the Shy now becomes a ranged champion. And SFM continues to hover up. Got Scuttlecrab up at the top side as well. Safety continues. Oh, and JJ can't get much done. But yeah, you know, Viper taking a bit of a chunk here while Bot continues to have a good time. Yeah, and that's all you kind of need here. Like, yes, you're going to end up falling behind in CS because of how aggressive Weibo spot lane is. But uh, as long as you're able to kind of keep in touching distance and not actually fall too far behind, you're going to be pretty good. 
SOFM now again trying to use this presence in the mid lane from Angel to see if you can bait onto JJ and keep being a menace here. Being really aggressive gets it. Level six as well. That means he has the heartbreaker available. Angel over the wall with a shockwave, but with that also comes Scout who has himself the demonic ascension. He backs away. He got what he came for and dagged it. His lead in the jungle is absolutely massive as well. Good sidestep from the shy while we watch top side, but you know what that means? He gets blue and he starts the dragon and SOFM with a great start to game one. Yeah, and this, oh, actually good trading here from the shy, but yeah. this is where you can actually see how you can like combat a like a presence from a jungler, not by playing to the lane that you expect DDG to play towards, right? So like in theory, JJ wants to try and play towards top side, but the fact that you're basically playing off of strong bot lane and strong mid lane for SFM to get in, steal camps, put JJ behind, and now makes it so much more difficult for JJ to actually impact top side because he basically has to go in a coin flip of going right. Well, do I take the definitive route of I can succeed by farming, or do I try and flip the game on going for this play in the top side or risk fall falling further behind? Well, let's pause on that because it's the bottom lane play that gets made first in the 2v2. Mako up with the wall and on. Gets absolutely obliterated. Meanwhile, Demonic Ascension popped in the mid lane. Angel has the Shockwave available, but he's waiting. And never move again comes through, but the Shockwave tags him back in. Denied while the 2v2 ends up in favor of EDG. Viper and Mako, baby. They're doing it again. And we put the question forward at the start of the day. Who was going to end up coming out on top between these two AD carries? And Viper right there putting Juan Fung in his place. Losing all those stacks now for the Draven is going to be a disaster. Especially when that lane had been going so well. The two kills going across. The Mana Mune completed. It's such a good uh, moment for the EDG support and AD carry. And you know, it could have been a lot worse, but... Props to Angel there, person putting out the fire with an amazingly timed shockwave. Dagda, we're in replay city here and we get to watch the bot lane play in full. Yeah, so you can see here, on does go in, but remember what we talked about, right? This is why you can't really go aggressive without the AD carry, because Mako just absorbs so much damage with that <laughs> unbreakable. And the entire time, right, like everyone's trying to hit on towards Mako, but... You're just getting so much damage down as Viper throughout. The auto attacks are coming through gloriously, and they're just able to take down both of them. Easily done by EDG. You know the scene in Game of Thrones? This is a spoiler, by the way. Block your ears if you're not up to, I think it's season six or maybe end of season six. Um, and, and, and and my partner out there, my fiance, block your ears. Um, so, <laughs> you know when you know when Hodor's there and he's hold, you know, he's actually holding the door and we find his backstory. And all those zombies, all skeletons are coming through and they're trying to break through the door. That's what it feels like getting against Brom with the damage we saw in the bottom lane. Mako absorbed everything in the kitchen sink and now because of a Dagda, Viper's 2 and 0. He has a man immune. It's such a big start for EDG considering we just talked about their strength being their, their strength within lanes and Viper and Mako showed us that in spring. Yeah, and again, this just kind of opens up a lot here for EDG, right? And so you can get the push onto bot side. You can even start to rotate up towards Rift Herald if you want to. It looks like they don't really want to commit to that, though, just because Scout, again, is struggling to get control over this mid lane because of just the way this matchup functions. So instead, they're just going to try and use this to turn in two plates on the bot side instead. And already one taken, two going to be coming through very shortly. And Viper kind of set himself up as a big carry now for EDG. So what do you do on, on Weber Gaming side, Dactor? Because as Herald gets started out here, as even Mako moves up to help secure, you talk to me about, well, Weber Gaming have a bit of, you know, mix and match here with scaling. We have the Shy up on the Kale, who's in a dangerous place to be ganked. You know, Angel here on the Orianna. I might need to pause because Scout's here, never move out of range. But one Fong is now not in a position where he's dominating lane. He's not the Draven who's snowballing. Maybe the wrong time to ask it, Dactor. What do you think? Yeah, we're definitely having a fight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold the thought, though, because SOFM comes around with an instant flash. Shockwave good as well. Angel once again calling in clutches. The Shy gets the kill. The Kale up and easy. So never moved to slow down Flandre and Mako on the run. And already EDG not going to have fun in front of the Herald anymore. And SOFM returns to start it for the second time. <clears throat> yeah, just a mixed bag of decisions there from EDG, right? 
they try to move up to top side to get a pick onto the shy because they want to try and get pushed for Flandre. But that means that then they're delaying the time to actually kill the Rift Herald. Viper had decided not to move up, so they hadn't committed with the bot lane that was winning on the map for EDG. So it means that they've kind of just been pu pulled several different directions. No one really picking one. And Weibo managed to actually get a pick of themselves and should be now in a much better spot. You see it here, right? Like, you've got only got Ezra in the mid lane here. JJ has kind of been taken down cool. from several different directions. And SOFM beautifully done there the flash forward to get the play even getting the predict on the damage onto jj as well so he's out of the equation and from that point forward on is just already roamed up so he's able to help out beautifully a nice little sync up there from sofm and angel uh, we highlighted angel quite a lot we said sofm in the first series had some dull moments but uh, nice to see them working together dactor though as we come back and herald does go over to Weibo gaming edg bottom lane is still ahead so the play doesn't go too well up there but EDG don't care because their Ezreal is massive. Viper just got so much plating towards himself, and JJ wants to double down. Yeah, JJ trying to see if he can make the play in the bottom side. Good poke on towards on and Juan Fung. And I mean, even if you want to just kind of hold this here, there's no need to commit to the dragon as JJ starts it because <laughs> uh, you've yeah. got push in mid. Rift Herald's there. You've got move on bot. I don't know if this is the best time for EDG. Yeah, and Angel's poked out scat a little bit as well. The Herald will disappear, but. Plating given over to Angel as he moves over. Still confident here in the strength of Viper as SOFM gets tagged away. Sonic Wave's there from JJ. The kick backwards as well. SOFM has his ult to get out, but he's on the wrong side of dodge. True shot barrage. Man, there you go. You get the Korean sniper from Viper. The 3 0 start that every Ezreal wants. Nice play from JJ to get the kick as well. And Weibo just not quite able to get the sync that they needed to actually try and find that pick. And means now EDG get one. Shy getting some good damage onto Flandre, but realistically, like the Rift Herald did get some gold in the mid lane for Angel, so that'd be nice at least for the Orianna. But it's been responded with massively by Viper, who's now sitting three and oh, three turret plates as well, a yep. 300 gold bounty for himself. Like EDG's bot laner is so strong at the moment. So, Dagda, I need to ask again because you know, Viper's still massive, and even though the Shy got the kill before, EDG is starting to push ahead in gold. It's close to 2000 but if i did math properly i'd tell you it's probably closer to 1500. uh i, I want you to tell me what happens if weibo gaming fall behind because yeah it, the scaling's in different areas and the draven's not in a position where he's massive yet yeah i think you still got like decent late game scaling here on weibo's side just because right. of the shy right but the thing is you have to find ways to enable the shy and even enable the viego in this composition as well okay. um if on can find good hooks you're in a good spot but my biggest worry is right like think about if you end up trying to like walk in head first into edg mako just pops himself up with the shield in front you've got flandre and uh, viper able to disengage through the back and then you end up with the the glacial fissure as well to stop any real follow-up from weibo so you have to be super smart here as on about how you actually start these fights off and who you're managing to get that engage on Okay, well, I, I like the discussion that we can have over the course of the game. Now, the Shy is going AP as everyone rejoices for this time around. Change from the AD has caught out a scout. SOFM moves on up here, but look, the whole of Weibo Gaming in here flash away from the Heartbreaker, and SOFM threatens to get a kill. You can see as well, they've just opened up the top side. The Shy stays in the lane, and even Huan Fong moving towards mid. Weibo Gaming put the pressure on while Viper's left be behind in bot lane. Yeah, trading bot tower for mid turret. EDG have Viper in the way. They may actually be looking to see if they can make a fight here, but On is just helping at the shy. So realistically, no EDG haven't really been able to um, to get the control that they want of, despite the fact that Viper is huge. So I think the big thing that you're gonna have to wait and see now is like, as this game goes on, the shy continues to scale. He's level 11. Like the shy is just gonna be able to take over in this side lane against Flandre. And that's where you're going to have to see if uh, EDG can continue to force these big objective fights where maybe they can win out with how large uh, Viper is. But this game isn't like completely over at all for Weibo. No, it's not. And Dagda, uh, let's go back to Scout for a second. That is a Rylai's first. So what do you think? How do you feel about so, it? I uh, actually don't mind it. I think it does really well, especially for like what EDG want from Scout, right? Like okay. Scout is basically going to play that bruiser front line where... 
as people are trying to jump in at the back line, he goes forward. The right is going to slow. Um, and as well, like we see this a lot when you're going to go for the Imperial Mandate, which is with the Kindle Gem picked up, chances are what we're going to see second yeah. here from Scout. Um, it means that then you end up getting like a ton of procs of the Imperial Mandate. And Lyric was actually talking about a lot in his casts, and I think Ox brought up as well, was just like when you have a team that you can trust to actually focus the people that have the Imperial Mandate procs, you can do so much work and get so much damage off of that uh, item. Nice little touch-up. Thanks for that. So we'll see as well. But for the Shy, uh, he's caught out here. Divine Judgment going to come through. JJ puts him against the wall. Trisha Barrage helping out. He's not dead yet. Thanks to a bit of durability. But eventually he goes down with the help of Flandre. Caught out in the side lane. The biggest one for EDG. Wavo Gaming come too late. Wait, hang on. Death Charge. Okay. They want to find this. Mako caught in the middle, though. He flashes away. But he ain't tanking up. And Huanfeng finally gets to cash in. Turn from bad to pretty okay for Weibo Gaming. I mean, it's a great play for Weibo, the fact that they're able to turn around, but I don't really get why EDG are, like, playing away from where Viper is, right? Like, this guy is absolutely huge at the moment. Two items already completed. And if you try to play around the Ezreal, that's where your main source of damage is going to be and you can actually find success. But they keep trying to make plays onto side lanes, onto, like, Flandre, who isn't really set up that well. Um, same when you look towards Scout, who's been caught out. And it just doesn't really work. So... Especially when you're looking at, like, Kale here. Kale is so good at buying so much time in these fights. So even though they get the shy down, when EDG overextend then on the follow-up, Weibo are able to get one back as Fong just roams down with no real pressure in the mid lane that Weibo have to worry about. Death Charge used on just walks past him again. Another clean play here from the support of Weibo Gaming. Uh, we talked a lot about him and <laughs> how he was going, Dagda, because honestly, On has just been beautiful to watch so far this split. Yeah, he's actually, he's really come a long way, even over the course of the last few years, and especially in that play there, right? Like, smart engage, and it means that you know, I don't know if you saw it, an 828 gold because the adoration stacks from one fog went over to this Draven. Uh -huh. So, two items now fully completed for the Draven. He's kind of back firing at all cylinders, so you've actually got to be very careful as EDG. Now, they do have position here on the Dragon because SFM went towards Rift Herald, so at least it'll be something for them, but... Uh, when you get in towards these team fights, you still have to be careful that Huan Fong will churn out damage. Yeah, I, I mean, again, look, two item Draven there. It might be a 3 0 Ezreal, but I'm glad you spotted the gold, Dag, because that's so significant here in the grand scheme. EDG and Weibo Gaming, game number one as well, they're, they're even in gold. And it's worth noting as well with 45 seconds until the Dragon, as a good never move comes through from Scout. Great combo as the Demonic Ascension is up and going. Angel's ready for the taking as it might be Rylo's first, but Angel knows he can't move anymore. Scout close to the solo kill. A big move for the mid lane of EDG as Viper comes rolling down, but Angel's already gone. Yeah, the dissonance giving the speed up there just about to get away from that but that should net them the top lane turrets and um, they got multiple members up here although as i say that uh Weibo trying to mount a defense but i mean at least getting members of Weibo off the map means that edg should be able to set up nicely with their vision control on this top side yeah so i'm interested to see dagda because they're hovering around for now it's barren in about 15 seconds but we're not watching fpx of spring here watching edg Weibo gaming and what we know about these teams, Dagger, is, you know, EDG through lanes, through the consistency we saw in spring, they were quite a force. But you've talked a lot about team fighting for Weibo Gaming, and especially in spring, how clean they were. And we even saw that again. Late game is key for this team, just with how they play with their dynamic. Yeah, and I still expect them to be absolute monsters when it comes to that as well. Like, Huan Fang, again, brilliant AD carry. you got Angel, who really has stepped up as a big big carry for Weibo as well and on things like the uh the Oriana where these shockwaves are key you're gonna have to be very careful on as EDG that you're not getting someone like Angel flanking on the side and managing to find these moments well SOFM gonna do exactly that in reverse EDG getting flashed on it's on to Flandre depth charge in the top plane and he goes sky high with Mako having to run back Weibo Gaming pull a couple of buttons but get no reward for EDG that is pretty big, though, because the fact that you have no flash on Flandre is actually going to be pretty significant for the Dragon in three minutes' time. Like, On will still be able to have that depth charge, can still, like, hex flash over walls and find engages, but the big one is actually getting some member of EDG that you know is just going to be stuck if you land that CC down. And that's exactly what Flandre is for this team. It's a way for Weibo to start fights and try and break the poke that could happen at these Dragons at a later stage.
Well, we've got one and two minutes 30, Dagda, and I'm going to bring you back because we're looking at two item territory here as well. Uh, Viper getting towards his third. Of course, he's the one that's fed. The Shy now has the crown of the Shattered Queen, uh, in short, Crowny, as we've called it. And, you know, a two item, the Shy, and look at the clock. Do you see that? He's 13 out of 16 as well. So he's hitting levels pretty hard. And the game at a state where it continues to be pretty much even as well. We always know the Kale win condition can come through at any time. We know that Kale, one of the best scalers in the game, uh, it's going to be a big threat for EDG to deal with, especially as we start getting towards the fourth, fifth Dragon Dagda ever so soon. Yeah, I mean, I genuinely am a bit worried for EDG here. Like, they haven't really kind of picked up the pace of the game enough where you can actually just run away with this and, like, one fight can end the game, right? Like, you're realistically going to be waiting here for like more dragons to spawn um, and this just gives that time for the level 16 to be hit by the kale now charge won't happen on the bot lane which has been unfortunate with the rift tower but it doesn't really matter you've got all these outer turrets down you're giving these long lanes to the shy giving them the opportunity yep. to continue to just farm in sides and i mean this kale is going to be a serious issue for edg so do you mind dagger if i ask you a little bit about the crown because let's be real um the shy is the shy right he's got this identity that He's a bit of a chad. He's a funny guy. He's someone who, he's just, he's just not the same as everyone else. Now, Crown here with the Nashes coming through. I find it interesting because Dagda, when we've seen AP Kale, it's been Riftmaker. It has pretty much yeah. always been Riftmaker. Yeah, I'm actually not a fan of it because, uh, like, when you look at, like, the poke that can come through from EDG, you're going to get that prop super easily, right? It's not like you're going to get full value out of it. I actually think the Riftmaker would have been a way better choice. Because um, even when you look at, like, burst damage on EDG, it's not exactly that high, right? So I think um, definitely this was a game for Riftmaker. And I'm not actually the biggest fan of the crown here. Um, I just don't see how you're going to get full value out of it. Well, you're scared of Viper, maybe scared of Flandre and... Hoping to survive the burst here from the Ezreal and the and the Jace, but Dagdar, I guess we get to see it in action in 20 seconds because we begin Baron up sitting there and Scuttle secured by Weibo Gaming just to give them a bit of vision control. But as they move up towards it, as Dragon spawns, they're like, "Hey, we do have vision control. We're going to threaten this for now." As the True Shot Barrage comes through. Yeah, three seconds on Dragon though. You can see Flandre is going to move down into that. So oh, here's the flash. It's cheeky. Oh, on to Mako. No. The Hex Flash cancelled in the end, and Mako doesn't have to burn his own. SOFM trying to play with snakes and ladders here on the back end. And once again, we A-ramming for the time being, but Flandre, the only person not there. He's taking Dragon by himself as SOFM won't get there in the nick of time. That's Soul Point given away, and EDG play the con game. Yeah, I mean, Weibo tried to bait them into the top side of the map, but EDG just kind of called the bluff. Flandre moves back down. And it means now, remember what we were saying, like the opportunity to try and punish the fact there was no flash on Flandre, like punish the fact that you can actually have these big uh, setups. But unfortunately for Weibo, they don't actually find that moment. And now all the summoner spells are back up for EDG. So point for them as well. Just a really nice way of playing the map there from EDG and calling Weibo's bluff. We still got gold even, but yeah, we know that in four and a half minutes, Weibo Gaming have to be there. Otherwise, Ocean Soul over to a Swain, to an Ezreal. Uh, that's that's pretty damn bad. So, Dagda coming through. Uh, let's let's start talking a little bit about what you come to expect, like how Weibo Gaming set themselves up for this threat, because EDG have a lot of options. I mean, they can threaten the dragon, then move to Baron, and Weibo Gaming have to be at their whim. Yeah, I think that's the 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 bit. So. The good thing for Weibo is that they can tend to win out on like any sort of mid push, right? Because yep. they are just uh, so much stronger. Being able to like threaten the engage means that EDG inevitably have to back off. So they should be able to get wave push and then have control over which side of the neutral they want to go for. And then trying to deny vision, but they just need to do it sooner. Like for Weibo there, they're kind of caught between, oh, are we trying to bait Baron? Are we trying to go out for Dragon? And they just never actually made a decision, even on an engage when Flandre wasn't there. So I think it's just having a bit more confidence in themselves that they actually can yeah. go for these plays. And even now, Weibo are trying to use that fact again, right? Like deny vision for EDG in towards the Baron and then allow themselves the opportunity to maybe EDG poke their head into the wrong place and on can hit them with the hook. But it's so hard, even without vision, right? The, the Swain vision of empires there. Going to spot them out. Viper with his true shot barrage. Flandre from range and shock blast in front of the pit. So there's always a way to spot out. And after the wave gets pushed in, EDG might have their turn of it. Now playing in the shadows, ready to clear out vision themselves. 
Not much in front of the Baron area and EDG hoping that Weibo Gaming need to come and check. Yeah, again, like for EDG, it's about landing like a couple of those Mystic Shots from Viper, like that big Shock Blast from Flandre. Like if they can get that damage to stick, they're going to be in a good spot. Oh. And even as you can see, just the complete lack of vision will mean that EDG actually will start up this Baron, but Weibo very aware of it. But SOFM's walking in by himself. A, a little bit of an inkling here from EDG is, remember Huan Fong used the Whirling Death to spot it out. EDG still playing with fire here in front of the Baron and SOFM, he's going to be slowed down walking on in at 5k. It's continuing on. EDG want to flip this one as teleport being burnt from the Shy, but it's gone. EDG have taken the Baron in game number one. The Shy coming in in the aftermath. He's got level 16, but it's a Kale with range. As SOFM takes a tag and EDG are out of there, burning a flash on Flandre, on Scout with his ghost, and the Baron is all theirs for it. And that's one of the things EDG's composition does so well, is disengage. With the, the ultimate coming in from the Braum, Scout having the flash and the ghost as well to get away, even the kick from JJ if it's necessary, EDG managing to get the objective, and now they can just group up and look to try and like siege down with this Baron buff. So really nice play from EDG. It's a shame. The Shy now gets level 16, by the way, guys. So uh, ruh, ruh. <laughs> be better late than never. I don't know, Dagger, but yeah, away with murder. And we're not even going to guess who done it. Uh, EDG have a minute 15 until that Ocean Soul comes up as well. And we're going to be on four item Ezra. We're going to be on three item Jace too. Feels like EDG have so much power at this point, Dagger. And, you know, Weibo Gaming, you were criticizing them for their indecision. You know, once again, it hindered them in this first game. And now it's going to make it even harder for them to try and defend this dragon, right? Because we said, hey, look, maybe you can try and brute force your way into mid-priority. Well, definitely not going to be the case with the Baron now in favor of EDG. They just get to stand there and watch the minions die. So EDG oh. now feeling brave. I mean, Viper ease over the wall. And the damage just hurts so much onto SOFM, who has a bit of extra HP. So you can see that Viper has just been strong all game long and continues to dish out the damage. Now for EDG, that dragon, 30 seconds time. One Fong getting priority in the bot side. While well, they're trying to get positioning down the bottom side of River Dagda, what do you want to see for Weibo to try and find this? I mean, you need a good engage coming through from SOFM or on. And you see SOFM trying to hide out in the shadows to get that engage. Let the Shy tear through. He's at three items. Like this KO will hurt. It's just about getting them into the fight. But Chejo's walked into melee range. Hang on a minute. He's walked into the Shy. Flashes away with SOFM waiting. Why did he do that as Viper? Arcane shifts towards trouble. It's a good never move from Scout as he pulls out the Demonic Ascension, but Weibo Gaming there split too. The Shy by himself, the Divine Judgment coming through SOFM, sending him backwards. The Shy alive for now, but they're all piling on. EDG, why? JJ gets completely caught out, and that was all they needed. Weibo needed to close the gap, and EDG just gave it to them. And now, Weibo, get to push up mid. The minions are there. They can do a lot of damage here, Asterix. Running in front of a Kale. Dagda just don't know what's happening. Weibo gaming with five members strong, and even with the Baron from JJ, they're tearing through the minions. One fell swoop. And EDG fall down. It might not be the end of the game here, but the inhibitor's broken over. The Ocean Dragon ripe for the taking. And Weibo Gaming given a lifeline in this first game. That Baron buff ended at nearly a negative 4,000 gold for EDG. Weibo decimating them in the team fight. Now they get the dragon as well. And look at the gold. It swung firmly in favor of Weibo. And we'll see it here. JJ, like, there is no... He's trying to just spot out where SOFM is. But having absolutely zero vision on where anyone else is, the Shy has a ton of burst damage. We said already, level 16, three items. This Kayla is going to do so much work. And now you're just fighting four versus five. And, I mean, what do you even do here? The Shy is tearing you asunder. Riley's as well, slowing everyone as he finds his fights. I'm just trying to look here, Dagda, because, yeah, again, you know, kind of surprised by EDG, but I'm just watching this play out and one after the other, like lambs at the slaughter, trying to recover the play, and the Shy kites it out quite nicely. So there you go. Crown doubters, I guess. Uh, the Shy made it work. That's what the crown was for. It all makes sense.
Yeah, it's it's actually just because it's like, you know, you drop this king when the shot ends up like, making the unbelievable play. But JJ again. Here we go again. I mean, JJ, what's going on? He goes golden, but he's buying time on might be low, but it won't matter if the jungler's dead. The flash forward from SOFM, but he's kicked backwards. It's one jungler after the other making the mistake as Viper flashes on in onto Angel. The shock blast, Flandre chasing up. Viper and Flandre recovering the play and Weibo Gaming are sent all the way back to their base. Mako flashing forward. The shock blast from Flandre. This game ain't done yet. Oh, it's uh, ADG throwing the game and Weibo throw it right back at them. Now they can actually start to move in. You got Scout as well off on the sides. Just trying to make sure they can stay here to pressure in towards the base as well. This should be the inhibitor now for EDG with dead timer still not up. Shy sticking around. Crown is now down. The Rylai is helping out, slowing them down. Level 17, but we're already past that point. Is Viper's damage is something to be scared of. He again hits like a truck, and EDG have done the same damage that Weibo Gaming did only moments ago. Dagged up, both mid inhibitors are down, and I don't know what to say about this game because it's 6-6, six and six and gold is once again near even. Yeah, I mean, look, it's been a little bit of a back and forth, a bit messy, but you can see here, right? Like, again, it's a great engage from on. It's like this guy stepping up once more for Weibo. But the biggest problem here is like the shy isn't really in position to follow up. JJ manages to go golden. And SOFM, like, way too far forward. Great reactions from JJ to like kick him into yeah. the team so he can get the follow up. And from that point forward, all the engage tools have been used from Weibo. So EDG just gets a free fire at them as Weibo struggled to get in range. I mean, it was really nice here. Again, the poke we talked about, or actor rather you did, in draft, the range EDG used so well here. And there it is. Once more, Viper hurts so much. Angels at half HP, Baron's up. And with those quick chunks, I mean, it makes it so much harder for Weibo Gaming. Yeah, the Shy is only resetting from bot lane. He still has the TP into the play as well. I mean, this could be gone. And 5k, 4k. Look at this. TP finally comes through at 3. Burning it down, but EG let it reset. Weibo Gaming are the ones with lower health bars. And another True Shop Rush flies through. SOFM looking for a steal on the back end. But EDG are still playing with fire. They know as on flashes on in for the engage. Death charge onto Viper. They need to kill the Ezra, but SOFM not in just yet. The Shy. Hitting away. He's huge as well. But EDG stand tall as SOFM didn't make the play, Dagda. Yeah, SOFM needed to. No flash on Viper. That was your moment. Weibo were waiting perfectly until On's flash was up, but SOFM won't commit. And look at the poke come through. Weibo Gaming are trying to run away. The Shine now frontlining in front of EDG. Weibo Gaming again. Hesitancy kills the cat as Scout running forward. He knows that this game's now in the bag. The Swain taking care of business and EDG will not go quietly into that night. Oh, it was so close. Weibo could have had that fight, but now EDG falling back towards this Baron. And with 40 seconds until the Dragon as well, they can clear this, reset, and get there to contest the soul as well. Look at uh, Scout already having reset to make sure that he can get there in time. It's gonna be so hard. I mean, that's so fair. I'm hoping for a steal and Yet the Baron taken once again, EDG. Even though the gold has an extended dagger, it feels like a firm grasp, right? It feels like EDG are at that point where, yeah, Weibo Gaming need a miracle engage. We haven't seen a huge shockwave come through. We haven't seen an insane SOFM ult or flank like we could have in that last fight. It's unfortunate, but hey, props to EDG for sticking in there. Because now with 10 seconds until Dragon, they are poised to strike and get that soul and look towards finally ending the game. Yeah, I mean, automatic mid push on out of the equation as well. He has no flash, only the hex flash available. But I mean, this dragon isn't even going to stick around long. And yep. suddenly this becomes so much more difficult now for Weibo as well. Because having that little bit of regen, having the opportunity here for EDG to make sure that they can like keep themselves topped up means that if you don't find that correct engage, then Weibo just end up falling to the, uh, the extra regen that EDG are going to have. Again, the poke going to be massive dagger and scout when he gets into the thick of it as well. That ocean salt is going to be very heavily felt as turret down in the bottom lane. That's going to be the next charge. The shy is moving in by foot because he burnt the TP in the previous play. Scout now here as well. All five members committing to the bottom lane push dagger. And uh, I'm struggling to see how Weibo Gaming going to defend against his Baron buff when the range keeps firing at him. 
Yeah, I mean, the siege is obnoxious. The double canyon minions there as well. Oh. Like, the amount of damage and poke is just perfect here for EDG. SFM doesn't realize, I don't think, that he's been spotted as he stands outside his base, but... Woo. Okay, heading forward. I mean, the Shy is, again, a, a mini fridge. You know, the bar fridge that uses a lot of energy, but still keeps things cold. As On needs to find the engage here. EDG positioning again to go aggressive as SOFM. Dodging away from the ulti, but Angel does not. He gets knocked up and flashes away. The Shy is the saving light of Weibo Gaming, but at this point, it's looking hard as EDG, again, get another inhibitor. And Dagda, they're using Baron to push in and try and find a win. Yeah, good news at least for Weibo is that the top lane wave is not in a position, but I mean, EDG, don't really look like they want to back. They're just waiting for the next line of minions to just conga line their way in. Waiting for the poke as well. Viper and hitting there and they never move. Connects, got him! As the poke follows through as well, on an SOFM at half HP. Beautiful stuff from Flandre as the whirling death adds a couple of layers, but remember they have Ocean Soul and the Shy does not. He's defending by himself with the True Shot Barrage, even adding a bit more depth to that. They successfully defend Dagda, but it looks like an onslaught. Yeah, I mean, there's still one more wave to go with 15 seconds. This is this. Can they hold? Watch Flandre as well. On to Scout. They find a target. Weibo Gaming want to make their line. And the Samba on is already dead before the fight starts. EDG now in a five versus four. It's one Fong running for the base. The Shy, the shining light. Blown to smithereens. Flandre and Viper hurt like hell as JJ with another sick kick flash. EDG, they were hanging for a bit there, but... Game one belongs to them. And EDG managing to bring it back. It looked a little bit dodgy in the mid-game when we got to those fights, but able to orchestrate it so, so well. And oh, yeah. a bit unfortunate there for Weibo. I mean, you could see that they were nearly able to get some of these plays in, but miscommunication, disjointed on the plays, meant that EDG were able to weather the storm and find the win. Really rough though, right? Because, you know, EDG, let, let's be real. That game, in terms of control, in terms of how it was going, the Shy was the member to watch for Weibo Gaming, but Viper found the 2v2 kill. Early double, found a follow-up in five, six minutes after that. Viper was in such a great position and just kind of coasted along, picking up CS and, and continued staying strong. Dagda, there was a, there was not really a point there where we were like, oh, EDG definitely going to lose this, until JJ got caught out and Weibo Gaming on a silver platter got handed this perfect little pick of a fight. Um, so it does feel like EDG should have won that game, but again, you're right, the mid-game wasn't as clean as we'd expect from the 2021 World Champions. Yeah, and you could see, like, the amount of damage the Shy was doing was absolutely insane. So, I mean, one or two of those fights look a little bit different, and suddenly he's tearing through the towers, and this could have been a way by win, but again, like, I... I really love the way On played these engages. I thought he was super smart. I just think that they needed to be a little bit more aggressive, Weibo, and how they went for this. Like, especially, you know, third dragon, uh, third ocean dragon, sorry, for EDG. On has the potential engage over the wall. They don't decide to take it. Viper is left out to high, high and dry when you've actually got the moment with SOFM on a flank at the Baron play, and he doesn't take the fight, right? Like, yeah. these are the moments that could have uh, clutched out this game. And even if SOFM doesn't find the kill, right? Just the fact you're taking Viper out of that fight is so important. And that could yeah. have been then the barn for Weibo. So definitely just a few misplays coming through that cost Weibo, I feel like, in the end. Yeah, it really didn't. Again, like that indecisiveness, like Viper caught out on the backside. It's so frustrating to watch uh, whether SOFM would have found success or not. But you, you will never know because it never happened. Uh, look, honestly... I will say that SOFM has been a little bit shaky at the start of the split. In fact, we know that SOFM was a, a core issue in spring as well. And this game in the first 15 minutes wasn't too bad. It was pretty clean stuff and we saw a bit of a lead gain from SOFM. But, you know, the Shy was never influenced. The Shy never got this perfect...